Coming up in today's video, we take a look at how I painted my Royal Australian Air Force Bowfighter. Follow along with me whilst I go through the various steps required to complete this build. Starting from using the amazing Scale Modeler Supplies RAF paints, all the way up to adding the prop blur propellers at the very end. This guide is great for those that are just getting into the scale modeling hobby. Let me know at the end of the video what aircraft you'd like to see next. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need for airbrushing are our gloves and then we're going to need our respirator. So we're using Scale Modeler Supply paints today. Um, I'm using the Lancaster set and these are solvent based paints so they kick up a bit of a stink and obviously not as good for you as what acrylic would be. So um, make sure you're using the correct personal protective equipment where you seem fit. And then we're going to be using the British interior colour. So this is fantastic green colour um, that's obviously going to be for the interior, as the name suggests. Um, and these paints were sent to me by Scott over at SMS. Um, so thanks once again for them. If you haven't seen my first video on this paint set, I'd highly recommend it. I'll leave a link in the description for that one. But they were kind enough to send me these sets out and I was thoroughly impressed the first time I used them. And I must say... I'm um, as equally impressed with this aircraft set. Um, it's a fantastic paint range and I would highly recommend you guys going and check them out. If you haven't heard of them before, I'll leave all of their dis uh, stuff in the description so you can go check them out. Um, but really, really good range of paints um, for any type of historical range as well. So then there we go, that's how they've come up. Very basic because look guys, you're not really gonna be able to see the interior. So I went really basic on this. I gave a little bit more detail to the um, one to 144 scale pilots, um, but yeah, nothing too crazy. So now I'm using camo black, which is also in this Lancaster paint set. Um, and I am painting all the panel lines. So this is just gonna darken those areas and it's just gonna make the, the paintwork look a little bit more uh, worn, which is what you want. Um, this airbrush is a Sparmax. It's a really basic airbrush. I think it's got a 0.20 uh, needle and nozzle. You can pick it up for about 100 Australian, so you know, 70 American and, and about 50 quid. Um, and if you accompany that with a cheap compressor, you've got a, a really decent airbrush. So uh, that might be something you might want to look into if you're normally using a brush to paint. Uh, it's a really cheap alternative. Um, airbrush especially to get started and now i'm using dark earth so this color i feel is a really good color for what i'm trying to do so i'm doing a rough bow fighter uh, that's going to be based for sort of new guinea or in the pacific um, and this model is a mark one model uh, raf bow fighter so it includes the correct decals that we need and I've painted another Mark I model. It was a Brewster Buffalo. Um, I'll keep link that in the description as well. Um, so been a bit hit and miss with Mark I models. Uh, I had another one from a friend of mine and it really wasn't up to much. Um, but this model in particular, I actually found really enjoyable and the detail um, is, is never missing on any of these Mark I models, regardless if it goes together well or not. So it's up to you. If you're a really good modeler, which I know a lot of you probably are, you could probably make it work, but I get frustrated very easily and it takes the enjoyment out of it when I can't align things properly. All right, so now I'm moving on to forest green. So I'm using a mask set. I'll leave that um, in the description so you can see uh, what set I'm actually using uh, because it comes in very handy when you've got these sets um, to sort of help you. It didn't go together 100% even though it's meant to be for this kit. So I had to use a bit of tape um, and I made a little bit of an error um, where I didn't wash one of the uh, back stabs. So uh, the paint was peeling off just slightly, easily fixable, um, just have to be a lot more, um, have to be more gentle <laughs> when I'm applying them next time. And obviously more vigilant and clean those, those areas, especially those resin areas. Um, and I will say that the paint from SMS works really well with the masking. It was only because I hadn't cleaned the actual area that that's where there was a bit of lifting from the paint. The paint itself uh, is very good and it takes to the masking really well. Um, I'm using now an acrylic to me, a sky color for this uh, because the set didn't include that because it's meant for a Lancaster, which has a black belly, not a, not this sky color. Um, 
so these paints have gone together super well uh, they work really nicely now to some of you eagle-eyed viewers you might be looking at it and going this guy hasn't primed it the reason i haven't primed it is because i only have acrylic primer and if i use acrylic primer and then put this solvent based uh, paint over the top of it you can actually get where the heat of the solvent base will heat up the acrylic primer and you start getting little holes not holes in the model but holes in the paint uh, where it's sort of like burnt through so it's best just to avoid it obviously get a solvent based uh, primer if you can now i'm just fixing up a few of the errors that i've made um, just from using the masking it, it's inevitable all right it is always inevitable you're always going to have a little bit of runaway here or there especially if you're somebody that rushes it like i am uh, but easily fixed just with a bit of tamiya masking tape now i'm actually creating some of those uh, exhaust lines or, or dirt coming from the engine and grime and i'm using about a 75 percent thinners to 25 percent ratio of paint tamiya black um, just to give it a, a, a subtle look i don't want it to be just black paint it needs to be more of a wash you could use a black acrylic wash for this it probably worked just as well but i thought i'd thin it down slightly now these props are from prop blur again i'll leave that leave their link in the description fantastic um photo etched props that look like they're moving um, very delicate so if you're going to be using these for wargaming i'd probably avoid it but if you're going to be putting it on display which i intend to do for mine and potentially wargaming every now and then um, they're really good and i'm just using a, a black and yellow for that now i'm painting the copper part of the front of the engine cowling so it's like a coppery color um, i'm painting this black first as my uh, base color or my undercoat i want to put the copper over the black just to darken it a little bit and I'm also making sure there's the um, exhaust that actually tucks in underneath the wing on the um, left hand side or the right hand side I should say of the engine I'm looking at it uh, the other way around uh, so I'm making sure I get those and any other part that is um, metallic uh, which fortunately for this there isn't anything else now I'm painting um, any of the intakes with a black wash so we've got an air intake just above the engine i'm going to paint that with a with the black wash just the part where it obviously goes in just to give it a dark black look so when you're looking at it it looks like it just disappears into into wherever it needs to go and then the tail wheel i'm painting in german gray there's all types of different rubber colors you can use here just whatever you want to use really um, and just be gentle and careful take your time it's very small very easily um, missed and then you're going to hit the surface fortunately it's acrylic paint so you, normally a bit of water on, on the brush can sort of wipe the majority of it away but it probably will leave a little bit of a stain now i want to paint those exhausts a bit of like a a rusty color so i'm using a 50 50 mix of black and orange brown from vallejo there's rust colors out there that you can use i just don't have one so i thought i'd make up my own and i'm doing like a, a detailed dry brush so what i mean by detailed is i'm not going crazy with the dry brush i'm just adding a little bit on now i'm going with the decals so i'm using microsol um, to start off with i've done a video on that as well on how to use decal uh, applications properly but I soak the decal in water and place that on top of the microsole and then I adjust it to where I want it to be. Once that's done, I'm now going to brush from the in from the middle of the decal out to get rid of any of that microsole that is underneath it. Want to make sure that it's nice and flat, it's not going to be moving anywhere. And then I give it another hit of microsole and then I repeat the, the process again. I'm getting this ready for the micro set that I'll be putting on next. So again, just rolling away in the middle of the decal, just rolling it out, getting all of that excess out of the decal. Now don't smother it on. If you put a puddle of this stuff on your model, it might actually end up burning through the paint, which obviously you won't want. Now I can hit it with some micro set. And once you've hit it with micro set, you want to leave it for a few minutes. You actually see the decal start to like almost bubble away. And that is the micro set working and it's going to start conforming to the, that surface. And then you can use a Stanley knife or anything like that to get into those panel lines.
because you want the decal to look like it's been painted on so it's obviously going to be in those grooves or in those panel lines and that's what this micro set is really good for and the Stanley knife helps with it because it needs a few coats um, it just depends on the decal uh, but the Stanley knife just improves and speeds up that process now I'm using an enamel wash so before I use this enamel wash I want to give those decals another coat of a gloss varnish then I'm going back over um, the panels but with this enamel wash so you can see I'm just placing dots down here and I'm, that wash is running without me having to drag my paintbrush across there it is also good practice to add a little bit of thinners to the wash just to help with that process of the the actual wash running um, it's not a super crucial step but it will help uh, with that wash to run thus not needing to use your brush to do a ton of work so how long do I keep it without um, cleaning it? I normally leave about half an hour and then I'll come around with a cotton board and just a little bit of thinners on that brush and I will just start cleaning away. So you can see I'm actually going in the direction of flight. So obviously when they're going forward, it's coming across the, the wings um, or over the wings. So I'm making sure I'm doing it in the direction of flight. So whatever wash is left it's sort of helping to weather the model as well so just to darken it just a touch obviously these wouldn't have been getting cleaned every day um, and they're obviously a lot of wear and tear on these sorts of models now i'm going over that the start of the engine with copper um, so it's sort of like a coppery color from the photos i've seen so i used copper from vallejo but I added a bit of black to it, just a touch, just to darken it. And then I'll go over it again with a, an acrylic wash because I really want it to be a lot darker. The copper color is really bright. I should expect it to be. Um, but obviously, as I said, with wear and tear and flying through dirt and smoke and all of that, that's really going to get really dirty really quickly. So we darken it up and we use that acrylic wash, as I just said. Um, I watered the acrylic wash down a bit. I didn't want it to be super dark. I just wanted it to be dark enough um, that it, it lost a lot of its brightness, but you could still make out that it was that copper color. Now I'm using Tamiya um, like powder pigments to weather the model. So I'm using soot here, and I'm doing that obviously around the engine. Now I'm using mud. Uh, and I'm just again putting that in the direction of flight just across the top of the wings um, and I'm using my finger just to um, get some of the bits of those pigments flush on the surface so obviously they don't look like grains of sand or anything like that and it also helps with that now I'm sticking on those props so the ones that are from prop blur which I've left a link in the description I'm sticking them on I'm taking my time and making sure I'm being obviously very gentle with this um, you know, you can use tweezers for this, but they're quite big, so I just use my, my fingers, my trusty fingers. And now it's time for the grand reveal. So hopefully everything's going to be okay when I peel off the mask on the canopy. And we're good. Fortunately, it's held up. There was a couple of little mistakes um, where a little bit of the gloss coat actually seeps through. It's really not that noticeable. If anything, it makes it look a little bit weathered which is perfect so really happy with how it came out the masks are really good both the one for the camo and for the canopies so yeah really happy um and yeah, i really recommend using masks so that's the end of the video uh, or the end of the process of painting let me know what you thought of it um is this video going to be of use and um, do you like the way that the uh, bow fighters come out it's a super awesome plane i mean it looks so cool um, so yeah i really enjoyed this um, what aircraft would you like me to do next is there any particular one that you'd like to see i know some people in the past have said they want me to do the tamiya 1 to 100 range i've really got to look into that so yeah let me know in the comments what you think and uh, like and subscribe if you're new here don't forget to hit the bell button just so you can get notified of my new videos but yeah i'll catch you guys at the next one and thanks again for taking the time to watch this thanks bye